episode of Smile with Prachi. This is Prachi. And starting with the first letter of the day, we're going to call the first writer Head Straightener. Okay, I see a Head Straightener right in front of me. So we're going to call the first writer Head Straightener. Okay, so Head Straightener says, Hi Prachi. I'm 23 years old, married for 4 years. Yes, I was forced into marriage very early. I grew up without a mother and my mother-in-law accepted me as her own. People literally couldn't believe how close we both were. About three years back, I accidentally got pregnant and I was not in the space to have a child at all. We were financially under debt. I was still in college and wanted to build my career first. I told my husband and he secretly got an abortion without telling anyone. Everything was good, but things changed. Things quickly changed the day my sister-in-law found out about it while visiting my doctor. She told the whole family and my mother-in-law, she was just furious. She has now given me an ultimatum, either to stop talking to her entirely or get pregnant within the next five months. She has been diagnosed with serious health issues and it is her dream to see her grandchild before she dies. I am doing well in my current job now and still need two to three years before even thinking of having a baby. I would want to be a stay-at-home mom when I have a baby and raise the child myself. She says she is willing to raise the baby while I go off to work, but this is not how I pictured things at all. She has completely stopped talking to me and it's been three months living in the same house without talking. I cry and cry. Am I being selfish to deny her this wish, especially since she is even willing to take up this whole responsibility of the child? Let me ask you a question, Hair Straight Now. If I go and tell my husband that buy me a diamond ring, otherwise I will not love you anymore, would that be right? It wouldn't be right because I'm putting a condition to our love. I'm putting a condition to our relationship. You give me what I want, otherwise we are done. How is that right? The same way your mother-in-law is putting a condition to your relationship. And let me tell you, love does not come with any conditions. Yes, you still have to uh, be faithful to the person you love. You still have to be honest and loyal. You don't speak behind their backs. These are some understandable things. But you don't emotionally blackmail someone like that. I get so many, you know, I'm sorry guys, I'm uh, diverting a little bit from the letter here, but I really have to address this. I get so many letters from my viewers, um, young girls saying things like, Prachi, my parents have told me that you need to get married within one year, okay? Otherwise, uh, they'll not talk to me. Otherwise, they'll throw me out of the house. Um, otherwise, my mom will be very hurt. She'll commit suicide. One of my parents will have a heart attack. Come on. Come on. You can't do that. How can you put a condition to love like that? This is all emotional blackmail. It's, it's using your love against you. And you need to put an end to that. So, Keep in mind that love does not come with conditions. Number two, I want to explain this to you because I want you to understand where this all, whole thing is also coming from, okay? You have grown up without a mother, okay? And it's very important for you that obviously you don't want your child to grow up the same way. You want your child to experience the joy of being around a mother. You want your child to have that experience. Now, every woman gets to choose her motherhood. Okay? Whether you want to be a stay-at-home mom, whether you want to be a, a working mom, whatever you want to do, you choose your motherhood. And for you, this experience of staying with your child, of raising your own baby is very important. Nobody has the right to deny you your motherhood experience. Okay? Nobody has a right to deny you that. Number three, we also need to understand this thing. It's very important. It's your mother-in-law's dream to see her grandchild before she dies. What about your dreams? And honestly, again, I'll divert a bit from the topic because I get so many questions like this and so many letters like this. That Prachi, my grandmother is very old. She wants me to get married before she dies. For your grandmother, it's one day or one month of celebration. For you, it's your entire life at stake. If you're not willing to get married, you don't get married. It's not, it's not your grandmother's dream to have. She cannot say that this is my dream and take over your dreams in life. That is again just selfish. And I know I'm going to get a lot of negative feedback, a lot of hate for speaking like this about grandparents and parents. I mean, I respect grandmothers, I respect parents, I respect them. But I'm just saying that sometimes people can be selfish and that can happen to your parents and grandparents too. In your case, obviously it's happening with your mother-in-law. 
she's putting conditions she's taking away your motherhood and she's making it her dream and her goal in life how is that her dream when you choose to be a mother that is a life changing thing for you she cannot decide that another thing that she cannot decide number 4 she cannot decide what you do with your body going through pregnancy is is very big for a woman's body so whether you choose to go for it's it's sad enough that you had to go for abortion without having your family uh, being there to support you it's a very big decision for any woman to let go of her unborn child it's emotionally also very traumatic for a lot of women so you went through all of that secretly because obviously i can understand you didn't want to tell your family you thought they will not support your decision and now when you don't want to get pregnant even that decision is not yours not to forget number 5 you were forced into an early marriage now you have a career now you're living the life that you always wanted nobody should take that away from you not even your mother in law not even your husband nobody no matter how close they are to you so it's very very important for you to stand your ground and say a strict no and if that means that she's going to throw tantrums this is basically throwing tantrums you know oh i'll not talk to you uh, or this is throwing tantrums ego issues you know being stubborn and this is basically her doing all of those things you need to put your foot down and say no and if she says that okay fine i don't want to have a relationship with you let it be let me be very honest a lot of families in this world do not have you know that idealistic family you see in karan johar movies most most people don't have that in their families in fact there are tensions issues fights in every family and in a lot of families people just can't bounce back from it that doesn't mean that you are dysfunctional that doesn't mean that there's something wrong with you or that doesn't mean that there's something wrong with your life you can still have your child when you want you can have your career and that will be your family that is what you create out of your own life you cannot decide how other people treat you so keep these things in mind don't let anybody force you and how to take a stand most importantly get your husband on your side because i i think that first of all it's very important and second your husband was there with you during the abortion thing so i am thinking that he'll be able to understand and of course it's important to get your husband to your side anyways right get your husband on your side ask your husband to speak to your mother in law and if required if there is too much of this drama and tension going on with your sister in law and mother in law if you if you feel like it of course that should be the last resort if you feel like it uh if there's a lot of crying and depression you feel you can move out of that house as well you don't have to live your life where in the same house in the same family there is this whole tension where your mother in law is not speaking to you that's again some kind of an emotional blackmail sort of a thing you know it is actually considered a form of abuse do you know that when one member of your family is not talking to you because you didn't listen to them and you know this whole silent treatment is actually a form of emotional abuse so if you think that this is just getting too much and it's impacting your mental mental health move out of the house you don't owe them anything moving to the next writer of the day who we are going to call hair curler okay so the first one was hair straightener the other the second writer is hair curler okay hey kalo says hi prachidi i have always been a very career oriented girl and have been studying to be a doctor one day very disciplined hard working and never letting anything distract me that was me before i met this guy we talk for hours every day now he has told me so many times that he loves me and will love me forever on one hand i love him too i just cannot stay without him On the other hand becoming a doctor was my lifelong dream and also my parents dream. His friends hate me because they think I have ruined his life. We even tried to stop talking. I blocked him and all that but could not stay without each other. How can I choose between my love and career? I also don't want to destroy his whole life. I'm 20 years old. Hey Colonel let me ask you a question. Why do you have to choose between your love and your career? Why do you have to take either one of the options? Why can't you have both of them in your life? You know, the modern day woman is so amazing. I mean, I think women have always had these amazing powers, you know, to multitask and do so many things. And now, with the women becoming more and more career oriented, they are handling their jobs they are handling their families they are even handling their children so well and don't even get me started on single moms i mean hats off to them you could be one of those women as well who handle their family their careers and one day if you have want to have a child then even your children 
you just have to learn to juggle and manage your time that's all that there is now i understand you're starting to be a doctor and there's a lot of pressure on you it's not easy obviously and with this pressure comes a lot of anxiety a lot of fear a lot of uh, fear of failure that what if i don't make it what if something stops me from achieving my dreams but you need to sit down with yourself reflect on your fears and let not don't not let those fears come in the way of having fun you can still have a little bit of fun you can still have friends you can still have a relationship you can still fall in love you can have all of these things together yes for you the major amount of time will still be gone into studying and you know taking care of your career and things like that and the other things might have to take a back seat once in a while so make sure that if you enter into a relationship with this guy and you both should enter into a relationship you both seem so much in love you can't stay without each other but before you enter into this relationship tell him that there will be times especially during my exam times that maybe for one or two months i'll not be able to give you any time at all i may not be able to talk to you for hours i mean i may be just able to talk to you for 5 minutes every day so are you sure you'll be able to handle that but i really do love you and i want to be with you set the expectations right let him know and as for now how to juggle amongst all of these things let me tell you how to do it okay number 1 you like talking to him right so you can set out some time every day to talk to him maybe you can use talking to him as a reward for yourself that okay i'll just complete this portion of my study material and then i will talk to him so half an hour i will concentrate fully or one hour i'll concentrate fully into this page or this segment or this thing and once i'm done studying this part i'll call him and we'll talk for 15 20 minutes or 5 minutes whatever otherwise what you can do is i'll study the whole day and i'll talk to him from 11 to 12 at night obviously you can't talk for like 11 to 5 o'clock in the night you know till morning 5 a.m. sort of a thing. You can't do that. You need your sleep. You need your studies. But you can manage these timings. Or for example, if you have any extracurricular activities, or if you just go for walks, or if you go for yoga, and if you live somewhere nearby, maybe you can go for walks together. So you know that's also very good for your physical and mental health because you're going out into the greenery, going for a walk, uh, feeling refreshed, and at the same time you're also spending some quality time with him, right? So do all that. Figure out a way to include him in your life without that damaging your career prospects. Trust me, it can be done. Number one, that was the first important thing I wanted to tell you. Number two, I want to tell you that this whole statement, you know, I'm ruining his life. I have ruined his life. Not true. I again get a lot of letters saying things like, "Oh, Prachi, my life is ruined because I loved her or I loved him or we had sex." And life doesn't get ruined like that. The only thing that can ruin your life is you yourself. You know, so if you take a series of too many, many, many bad decisions, and with too many, many bad decisions comes a lot of uh, bad uh, things. Actually, even then, you know, life is not really going to get ruined. Let me correct myself. The only thing that can ruin your life is you yourself when you are in depression, when you are not taking care of your mental health, and you know things just go south from there. So, in case you think that somebody's life is getting ruined or your life is getting ruined, you need to get into therapy. you need to get help even if you have taken a hundred wrong decisions bad decisions in your life you can still correct it it may take longer than you would want sometimes some issues take longer to fix some issues are more serious than the other i'm not saying that but things can be solved as long as you wait patiently or if not solved you get over them eventually okay that pretty much applies to everything in life there could be exceptions maybe i'm missing out on something but that's pretty much the bottom line of it all Okay, so guys, that's all I want to share with my two writers of the day: hair straightener and hair curler. If you have any suggestions for these two writers, uh, please share your suggestions, your comments, your stories in the comment section below. I think personally that for both of these women, there is so much of hope. There is so much to do. Personally, I love it when women talk about having a career goal, having. A, you know dreams and ambition i think it's so important i'm not saying that being a housewife is bad or being a, a mother and you know making that your full time job is bad of course not i think i have so much respect respect for women who choose to do that but at least for some time in your life even if it's just for a few years like the first rider ride right? even if just if it's just for a few years step out work do a job have a career see what's life like out there you know it will teach you so much and financial independence will help you grow and develop so much of self confidence as well and after that if you want to stay back at home take care of your family by all means do it 
but make sure you develop your identity before that and career is often the best you develop your identity for a lot of women it's other things if that works for you well and good but find yourself first okay so yes guys that's all i want to share in today's video uh, if you have any suggestions i've already said this share your comments and if you have any stories or if you have any of your own questions if you have been writing emails to me and if i've been missing out your emails guys first of all i'm so sorry if i missed your emails i try my best to reply to as many emails as possible but you know it takes a lot of time like each letter i'll probably spend like 15 20 minutes thinking over it and then i'll respond so i can't really respond to all the letters and sometimes the letters are just pending for months and months it's probably gotten lost somewhere in my gmail account so maybe you can if you want you can anonymously write your letter in the comment section as well a lot of my viewers are giving amazing advice these days i see the comment section of smile prachi and it fills me up with so much of happiness thank you so much guys for straight for helping out complete strangers and sharing your thoughts helping them just or sometimes just hearing out people also helps them right so yes guys that's all i want to share in today's video thank you so much for watching um Okay, I think I'm just repeating myself now. Have a great weekend, everybody. This is me, Prachi, signing off now. Bye-bye.